humans. I'm Josh, and welcome to an extra instalment of The Madhouse. I'm filming this extra video because today is the 11th of October 2015, which means it's National Coming Out Day, and the second anniversary of my coming out to my mum, and exactly one year and seven days from when my dad and my brother found out. Found out that I'm gay, although strictly speaking that's not the most accurate label, but it's the one I'm going to use, because for the sake of my sanity, I'm explaining the performativity of gender roles and that I've decided that neither the label of male or female applies to me. It gets incredibly complicated, especially among people who don't understand the idea that gender is not the same thing as one's sex. I wasn't planning to make a video like this because it feels a bit like a cop-out. Um, so many queer people that can make one and get 10,000 hits in it with next to no effort. And I don't want that. I want people to watch my videos because they like them, because they find it funny or educational or intellectually stimulating or just entertaining or, well, anything. But for the value of the content itself, not just because it's the gayest thing I can come up with. So let's start at the beginning. I'll be speaking pretty quickly because I want to get this into a shorter film as possible. Mm, but Hopefully you still understand me. I'll start at the very beginning. I was six when I first noticed that there was something different from my classmates. We didn't quite click. I thought that perhaps it was my intelligence because, well, if you've been watching for a while, you know that I say this often and I don't mean to be arrogant when I say it, but I have almost always felt like the most intelligent person in any given circumstance. It may not be true, but that's what I felt and it usually was true. Um, but it wasn't that, or not just that. At seven, I realised that I had almost entirely female friends and next to no male ones, which really doesn't make sense, because you'd think if they're gay, you'd want to hang around with males a lot more, but apparently not, not at that age at least. Um, I was also terrible at sports. I could be a goalkeeper at football, but only because I was tall and wide. I had no skill at it. I could swim, but that was about it. And then when I was ten... We were changing for PE, and one of the boys was showing off his six-pack, and I should point out that I was too young to feel anything that I would now know attraction. Well, no as, rather. Although, n not everyone's that way. Some people can, but not for me, and attraction isn't something I really go in for very often anyway. But I was fascinated. I'd never seen anything like that before, and, well, I, I wanted to explore it, find out more about it, because it was so very interesting but I didn't because it would have been weird I mean not only weird in the fact that it's kind of invading your friends privacy but also the fact that I was at church schools because guess what my family was pretty religious not have an exorcism kind of religious although I make jokes about that now but fairly religious anyway my parents wanted to meet me to become a priest which is why i got ordained on the internet a few years ago while i was bored we we didn't even learn about the existence of anything that was queer because well if we had any thoughts about it we weren't given access to useful pamphlets saying so you think you might be gay no we were pointed to the bible two very specific passages in leviticus deuteronomy and well you get the picture Nothing that would tell you that you're welcome here, that you're not an abomination. Because, guess what? We were. Uh, and I believed it, too. But anyway, I later learned that there was more to sex than rubbing tummies together to make a baby, as my parents had told me. And at 12, I wanted to start exploring this. So, um, while many of my male friends had started dating girls and talking about breasts, so... I wanted to have a look too. And like many people of my generation, I turned to the internet. Probably not a good idea because what you come up with are some apparently very pretty women who have melons on their torsos. Not real people in, at all, or certainly not natural, although if people want that kind of surgery, I'm quite welcome to. It's just not my forte or cup of tea. I felt nothing from it. I thought that maybe I was too young and I left it for about another six months. But then I thought, you know, what if it was guys? What what if I had a look at guys instead? So I went to my computer and I typed in something probably like hot guys or cute boys, whatever. And, um... Well, I don't really remember what I saw after that because my, my head started to feel really fuzzy. The room began spinning and my 
heart was pounding like a drum. And, ow, that hurt. I turned off the computer, ran upstairs, and tried not to think about what had, what had happened. Mm, didn't work that well. Because I was still terrified of being gay. The idea of it, it had always been something negative as a child. Something that we only heard of, of as an insult. Oh, that's so gay. But, and I tried to pray the gay away. I hate that phrase, but it obviously did not work. It was around this time that I also started questioning my faith and, well, settled into a space of um, mental illness, let's call it. Um, depression, eating disorders, I went six months unable to eat solid food, self-harming. A lot of unpleasant stuff. I won't go into any details, really. Well, any more details, at least. Um, but eventually, I realised that I didn't need a god. I, if I'd perhaps been able to speak to a theologian with an e expertise in soteriology and eschatology, then maybe I wouldn't have come to that conclusion. But, of course, no one's going to let a 14-year-old talk to someone like that. So, I decided that that I didn't need a god, because, and that there wasn't one. And if there wasn't then one, then why was I afraid of being gay? Because he obviously couldn't burn me for all eternity if he's not there. Still, I didn't try to date anyone because I thought it would be awkward, and I still wasn't quite comfortable with it. Self-loathing and all of that shit. Um, I mean, in fact, when I was 12, I did think I had a crush on my friend Lawrence, who I thought, you know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm obviously not gay. Look, a girl. But... I soon realised that this wasn't the case, that she was just the first really close friend I'd ever had, someone who I could tell everything. But it didn't help my self-esteem when, before we started being friends, she made me promise to never ask her out. Just, well, well, thank you very much. We're still excellent friends now, and she set me up with another of our friends, which didn't go amazingly well because we were both incredibly gay. Uh, but we're still friends now, and I don't suppose many people can say that about their first girlfriends. I was about 16 when I finally began to feel comfortable with the idea of being gay properly and started to accept it. It took time, but I realised that I was still making a mountain out of a molehill, making a problem where there didn't need to be one. I saw my sexuality as a problem, a flaw that had to be corrected, blotted out. And it wasn't. It could be a strength as well. It's like when people bullied me for my eccentricities, for being strange, for being clever. What do you do? You sharpen those into a dart and fling it right back into their eyes. Sharpen, make it into a shield so they can't hurt you anymore. When they tease you for saying, oh, that's so gay, or don't be so, well, the word they used was faggoty for one point. It's just, yes, I am, darlings, and I'm fabulous, bitch. Now, fuck off. It rendered it impotent. Once I'd accepted myself, it didn't matter what they said to me. Because no one could harm me. Now, officially, the first person I told was the counsellor at college, who was absolutely lovely. She was amazing. But technically, I did tell a friend of mine before then, but it wasn't the whole truth. You see, we were on the bus into college, and because we'd studied German together at high school, although he'd given it up, I figured that he would be able to help me with an essay I'd been planning. So I showed him the essay plan. It was about family relationships and future plans. And one of the questions on it was, Ferdus du verheiraten? Which is, do you want to get married? And my answer included the words, Ich bin bisexuelle, which is German for, I am bisexual. It was a lie, and... A rather cowardly move, something I'm slightly ashamed of, because it contributes to bisexual erasure, which is something we don't need, because I honestly wasn't bi, although I was kind of hoping that might be the case, because, well, it would be so much easier, and it might give my parents some hope, false hope, but still hope. He was incredibly accepting, surprised, but accepted, the same way I was when he told me a secret, which I'm not going to share with you, because it wouldn't be a secret otherwise. Um... And then about six months later, on the 11th of October 2013, National Coming Out Day, and this wasn't even planned, it just happened, my mum and I were sitting alone in a car park waiting for my brother to finish rehearsals for a play. And we were chatting, enjoying ourselves, when I just blurted out to her, Mum, I've got something important to tell you. I'm gay. I'd been terrified at saying it, I'd been trying for weeks, and I just couldn't figure out a way to break it to her gently. Not without telling lies, and I couldn't, so I just said it. And it, ooh, 
I'm very glad that I did, but I mean, even if it had gone badly, it was a good thing because I'd been honest, and in our family, honesty was the most important thing. Lying was something we tried never to do to one another. I mean, technically I've been lying for years, but this was the first time I've been truly open. I mean, she didn't react badly anyway. We cried, we hugged, she told me st he still loved me, and that perhaps we shouldn't tell Dad yet because he is a conservative politician. But it, it was lovely. She talked to, she asked me if I had any crushes on someone, if there was someone I liked. I said, uh, not any people I know, but Tom Daly is very pretty. And on a similar note, I'm not quite sure I understand heterosexuality. I mean, sure, ladies are great for conversation and they're excellent friends. But if I had to choose between Emma Watson, who is very beautiful and for whom I have a lot of, imad ad uh, a lot of admiration, sorry. Um, and I'm also a massive Harry Potter fan, and Tom Daly, then there would really be no choice. Tom every time. Sorry, Emma. Almost a year later, I was at university where I'm out to, well, everyone. I never bothered to closet myself here. I was an active member of the LGBTQIA society, and it felt fantastic. I made lots of other queer friends, and they helped me to fully come out of my shell and the closet to everyone to, well, to build up the courage to do so anyway. Still, I hadn't told my dad and my brother, and I had no idea how to tell my extended family. I was waiting to tell my dad until October the 11th again, so that it would all, the anniversary would fall on the same day, but I never got the chance. I got a call a week earlier. Exactly one week, in fact, from my mum, telling me that I didn't have to worry about coming out. Because they'd found out anyway. Turns out, they'd been going from my room while I wasn't there, I'd been expecting that, to tidy it out, sort out and get rid of any things that weren't needed anymore. Fair enough. But what I wasn't expecting is that they found a diary I'd made when I was younger, probably about 13, 14. Something I thought I'd gotten rid of years ago wherein I'd written about all of my mental prob problems, my sadness, um, and then the being incredibly single, being gay, and then there were pictures of uh, people who... people who I fancied in various states of undress. There were a lot of scantily clad photographs of... Um, what's his name? Zac Efron, for example. I mean, I was mortified, because that was not how I planned to tell them. I, I planned out a speech which, in my view, if you'll... Pardon the, uh, what's that word? The lack of humility? Was masterfully written, but it wasn't, I was, ooh, it was terrifying. But he accepted me. He still, he'd prefer it if I was straight, but he's fine with the fact that I'm not, although he does still occasionally think, why don't you get together with your best friend? It's just, well, firstly, you have forgotten what the word gay means, and second, she's moving in with her boyfriend of three years. So even if I weren't gay, she's taken. My grandmother then found out a week later she was staying for an operation, and she heard my parents talking about it in their bedroom. My mum spoke to her, and, and then she told me about it, crying down the phone, because we're 90 miles away, and it was, it was not good to listen to that. She was saying, oh no, I shouldn't have done that. It, it's not my thing to tell, which was just, well, it wasn't, but I really didn't mind because it was something that had to be done, and I have no idea how to tell a 75-year-old woman that I'm gay. We both share the same temper, slow to anger, but then we both have the name of Vesuvius when pissed off. People run, and they don't manage to escape. But my relationship with my grandma is as close as always, and it's fantastic. I had worried myself sick over all of this, about trying to come out, and there was no need to at all. It was all in my head and not in the outside world. And that's fantastic. I mean, it's not the most tragic story. Sure, the mental health problems were a bitch. Um, but there are people who have it far worse. If you take only one thing from watching this, take the fact that it's not as bad as it looks, and yes, I'm going for the cliché. Hashtag, I can't do that with one hand. It gets better. It, it's worth it, trust me. Honesty is always the best policy, but make sure you're safe. 
and that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you haven't gotten bored and, bored and listening to me get mopey and talk about my feelings because I don't like listening to other people talk about their feelings very much. There's only so much of it I can take before it gets sickening. Um, let me know your thoughts on it. Please click like, share and subscribe. And if you have a coming out story or shush, or you were affected by someone else's, perhaps your loved one came out to you, Tell me about it, because I'm fascinated to hear, and if anybody wants any advice, I'm quite happy to do it. I'm trying to set up an Agony Aunt column for the student newspaper, but I'm not quite sure if people would necessarily like to read it, because, well, it would be more of a satirical ag Agony Aunt. But still, I hope you have a wonderful day, and make it a fabulous one. Goodbye.